Welcome to a weird episode of You Are The One You Seek. I'm your host, David, and I've got to be real with you today about where I'm at. I've been releasing episodes at a slower pace, and I've just been focusing on the Yeshua channelings because honestly, right now, that's about all I can really muster. I've had a a bit of a roadblock getting interviews lined up and have just kind of felt discouraged about that and not sure if, if it's even really needed because there's so many places that are releasing NDE stories now on YouTube that maybe this is just another redundancy having this channel. I don't know. I, I'm honestly just in a kind of a bad place all around mentally. I think part of it's the summers here in the South are exquisitely difficult for me to enjoy. I just, I really, like my body type does not do well with heat. I think part of that's like the whole Ayurvedic body type thing, your dosha or whatever. I don't know if any of you have come across that. It's kind of interesting. But reading about that, I think maybe I'm a pitta, which means I have more of a, a fire element in my body, in my the way I operate, which makes sense. But also with like my digestion and just heat tolerance and all that kind of stuff plays into it. So like, for example, I'm always way too hot, running, running warm and self-sabotaging by putting spicy stuff in my food all the time, which now I'm realizing is a, is a mistake, even though I love it. And my wife is the opposite. She needs spicy food, even though she doesn't really seek it out. And she runs really cold. So we can never really agree on a, on a temperature, which I know is a typical couple problem. But, and on top of that, I have two teenage kids. One of them is learning to drive and I'm trying to teach them. And they also work and their job is way across town. We moved to a a cheaper spot of town where we could get a nicer house, but the commute now to anything we want to do is, is brutal. I live near the, I think, second or third largest port in the country. And the the amount of 18 wheelers and trucks that are, that are just constantly on the roads around here is insane. And the amount of car accidents that happen on the roads we take is daily and frequent. So I'm trying to train my 15 year old daughter to drive on this suicide route to go work at her job. And like, it's stuff like that, that I think really makes it hard for me to enjoy life and just relax because I'm supposed to be in in charge of people's survival. And like, I feel this massive weight of responsibility, even though I'm supposed to be like letting go of that, you know, and like trusting that it's not my responsibility. We're only responsible for ourselves, but that only goes so far when you're talking about just physical day-to-day stuff. Like it doesn't mean I just get to check out of my children's lives while I'm here and just make them do everything for themselves. It would be ideal to have more and more fall on their plate. And we're working on that, but man, like I'm not going to put my children on the road when they're not confident about their ability to navigate a really dangerous commute. So there's just a lot of, there's disagreements about that in the house, you know, how we should approach that. And I just, I haven't worked since November. I haven't had a job. I haven't really had much social contact at all. Most of my friendships have dissolved because they were based on Christianity. And as soon as I stepped away from that, people kind of just slowly dipped out. A few of the ones who kind of tried to stay along just couldn't really... Like, things things were very different. The dynamic changed so dramatically that even the ones that tried to hang around kind of realized they couldn't keep up with the fact that I wasn't going to, you know, pair the same beliefs, I guess. So I actually really only have one friend that I see regularly who's a Christian, and I think he even struggles to call himself that because he understands so much of the the, the hurt and the wrong that happens within Christianity and just um, any religion that follows a book. So I'm just in a down place. I'm just feeling really unmotivated to get the podcast, you know, firing on all cylinders. I think doing things about... I think doing things creatively by myself is really challenging because I I usually self-destruct pretty quick and, you know, all of the the harshest criticism that could ever come from anybody always comes from me. And before anyone can send me a nasty email, I've already sent myself, you know, 50 in my mind, basically, 
cutting down everything I'm doing wrong. And I, I've let go of a lot of that, which I had to, to launch this podcast. But now I'm just sort of back in that, uh, what am I doing? You know, like, who am I? It's imposter syndrome. I don't feel qualified to be doing this, even though I really, really want to. And I really do feel passionately about a lot of these things I've come across. I don't think all of these NDEs are just a, a fluke or a hallucination or drugs or, you know, the typical excuses that are really falling apart. The more people investigate the nature of, of many of these NDEs, especially the ones that happen in hospitals where where patients can give a detailed account of things that were happening to them while their brain had no activity. And there's no, there's zero plausible scientific explanation for having zero brain activity and knowing exactly which tools were being used and what cuts were being made and what procedures were happening during that entire time. Even people who had their eyes covered and their ears plugged while they were in surgery who died could still recall all these detailed things. And it's happened so many times that you really just can't say, oh, it's just the brain misfiring, hallucinating. There's, there's, there's more going on. Consciousness is not housed in our body. It's just temporarily hanging out there. And it's not just in the body. It's in everything. So I believe that. I still believe that. But it doesn't change my the day-to-day -day frustrations of like suburban American living and trying to raise kids and be a good husband and feeling like you're not doing any of those things well and also not being the spiritual person you want to be. Like, I just, I don't, I, many days I just don't like who I am and I don't like the way that I feel about a lot of things in my life. And on the other hand, I feel super guilty and then look at it and go, dude, look how good you have it. Look how much, look how many positive things are happening in your life too. And look how healthy and beautiful your children are. And, you know, you have a, a wife who's hung by you through a lot of tough times. But her and I have had a lot of clashes too, where we just, we see things so drastically differently that it's really hard to find common ground. And like anyone else, you go through those pockets of, of really up times where, you know, everything's in sync. And then just those stretches where it's, everything is a struggle. You're fighting about petty garbage. I just, I'm just really exhausted with the cycles of life. And, and I feel like I'm, I'm not just basing that on this lifetime and the exact experiences I'm having as David O'Donnell. I feel like this is accumulation of other lifetimes, other heavy energies that I'm embodying that are either from experiences I've had or I'm absorbing energy from other people and their traumas. You know, part of being a hopeless empath is just not knowing how to draw boundaries and just absorbing energy that is not beneficial. That's a challenge, I guess, with a lot of Reiki practitioners is if they're not really grounded, it's easy for them to absorb a client's negative energy and go through the rest of the day feeling terrible while the client feels great because they've had that energy kind of removed. So I really, I'm really craving a connection with, with the spiritual. With I, I, I would love to have an energy healer work with me, but I... I really haven't been, again, not, not working, not making money. There's this guilt. Like, I can't spend money on myself for, like, an expensive thing like Reiki or past life regressions or any of these modalities that might be really beneficial to me. You know, and then I read in Yeshua Channelings and Course in Miracles that there isn't one specific thing or a set of specific things you're supposed to be doing, and that's, like, the only way to enlightenment. It's very individual, but... It's supposed to be about like getting past, I guess, needing specifically a thing to get you there. But I mean, I read that and I go, that sounds great, but how do I actually make that happen in my life? How do I actually embody that notion of there's nothing I need to do to earn or achieve true healing or true grace or love? It's already the core and the essence of who I am and who we all are. And, you know, it's interesting. I just read yesterday an excerpt from the Law of One channelings, which is certainly something I would consider reading on here. I've always found those to be really interesting. But it was just talking about how the third density is, the earth plane specifically, is the most polarizing and 
divisive place that's ever existed in the universe. And there won't be anything like it afterwards. Like, this is kind of a very intense experiment of what would happen if we really truly got to a place where we had such a, a thick filter that we actually were born into this world feeling pretty much completely cut off from God or from the knowledge of who we are. And then having to navigate that and organically find love. You know, it's I get like the... I can see why that would be appealing if, if you needed a certain level of progression as a soul or whatever. If maybe we lived all these lives before where we're, we were kind of stuck in more binary types of lifestyles, they might have been a lot more pleasant and chill, but maybe we weren't learning all the lessons we needed to learn to ascend to a higher frequency and all that stuff. But it doesn't change the fact that this earth life can really, really suck a big one and often, and it's okay to, to like check in with that and, and feel that. Let's be real with ourselves. Let's not be, let's not try and sugarcoat everything. And, and like, that's, that was something that really bothered me in Christianity was when it was time to get real and be honest about the struggles we have, everyone ran screaming and just deflected to platitudes and pre-planned statements that were beaten into their, you know, beaten into all of us who were in the church or in a Christian school or wherever it was. And I don't want to get that way again. I don't want to just make everything about a platitude and reduce reduce the struggle of life down to some trite things that might work. I mean, maybe they're not trite, but maybe they only work for a specific group of people. You know, one size does not fit all. So it, I know this sounds like a giant rant fest, and it kind of is. I just need to be honest about where I'm at and who I am. You know, I'm, I'm, I've made it clear in previous episodes that I'm not Mr. Enlightenment. I'm not some ascendant master. I, I've, I've been on this journey for about four years now. And, well, actually, the, the spiritual part where I, I finally moved off of atheism, that's only been, you know, two and a half years ago. So... It's, it's not surprising that I'm going to have some really dark moments and kind of backslides towards, I hate using old Christian terms, um, where, you know, where I'm going to have regressions towards behaviors that were really destructive for me, but they felt right because, well, I, I know what I'm worth, so if I'm acting this way towards myself, I'm, I'm, I'm acting correctly, you know? And it's hard, it's hard to try and and like convince myself that I'm a spiritual being having a human experience and that I'm divine and internal and all this stuff when it's just when it doesn't feel present in my daily life where it those feelings can, can come and go with so many circumstances and energies and situations and it, I just feel like you know defeated for not being able to be the person I want to be the majority of the time and I see that disappointment on my kids' faces, on my wife's face, that I'm not consistently the, the man that they would like to have or that I would like to be. But I also have to let go of people-pleasing and trying to make other people like me for being a certain way or doing things, you know, by their expectations. Because then, then you're living, then you're becoming every different version of yourself that is in someone else's head. And that's an impossible task. I heard... Alan Watts talking about that recently, where the, you know there could be thousands of different versions of you that exist out there in the world in other people's minds, and for you to try and live in accordance with those perceptions is impossible and will make you crazy. So you really have to, at the end of the day, come back to yourself and go, who am I and what's important to me? And forget what all these people put on me or said or expected what is what is resonant and important with me and it's hard to it's hard to find that when you're kind of stuck in a situation where you feel obligated to be you know present with these things that aren't really who you are but they're a commitment that you made that you feel a responsibility towards and i mean that like with my family i've i've tried to leave a few times with the intent of never being more than you know 30 minutes away from my kids and I just couldn't do it. There was something deep in me that, that said, this isn't your journey to run away. Even if that is 
maybe a way better choice for you personally. Maybe there's a lot more that I could tap into that's resonant with who I am, you know, outside of a traditional family setting or a traditional kind of suburban lifestyle and the same types of jobs. Like I, I crave nature. I crave being in the woods and working at like a, a retreat where people turn in their cell phones and connect with nature, connect with each other, share good food, share honest feedback. Like in my dreams, that's a place I would work or, or help start or whatever is like a, a forest sanctuary, but it ain't going to happen in Port Wentworth, Georgia. There's not all the nature around here gets bulldozed. You have to go a pretty good distance to find hiking or anything that's like um, nature that that isn't like covered in horrible bugs. We also have just horrible, horrible swarms of biting gnats and mosquitoes and everything. It, listen, again, this is this is, this is a very <laughs> down moment for me so I realize this sounds pretty depressing to just hear me rant and ramble about things that are weighing on me but it's important for me to be honest and I know some people say it's it's better to just leave that stuff you know inside and and don't burden other people with it but if we're all going to do that well I think that's what we have been doing is internalizing our struggles and encouraged to not deal with them out loud or in a way that's actually therapeutic. So I'm not going to do that. Yes, it might be a little messy. I might come across, you know, like I'm whining, but I need to be honest. And so, yeah, I don't know what the future of the podcast is. I'm still trying to figure out just who I am and what I want to be. And at almost 42 years old, it's uh, definitely feeling like a midlife crisis. (laughs) Uh, I I mostly want to be an anchor for my family, but I do really struggle with what's required of me to do that because it's so counter to kind of who I am. And I committed to all of this when I was still a Christian and still in a very different mentality about myself and the world. So to make such a huge shift internally is really difficult to maintain kind of the same lifestyle. And maybe, you know, I know that's kind of part of the problem, right? is switching things up and we my wife and I have switched a lot of things up you know we the most obvious one is not going to church anymore which happened right around COVID which was when I left when I moved out and during that time I gave my wife a lot to think about with her involvement in the church and what church is and we never went back after that but and our kids never went back they, they didn't really have any interest in it we realized that they weren't really doing it because they liked it just because we we're making them, but, and we try to be really, really open and honest with them and give them so much runway for being who they want to be and expressing themselves honestly and openly. But there were so many years of it being the opposite way that it's hard to undo all that easily and quickly. So I think I'm just struggling through the stages of trying to reach the life that I want to live, but also trying to figure out if that's a life that other people around me want to live. And, and what to do for a job, you know, and, and not having income coming in on my behalf is difficult to, you know, because of the way society places expectations on us and puts our value into our jobs and how much money we make, it's really easy to feel bummed out and feel like a failure as a human being because I'm not working at the moment. And, you know, I worked from, I worked or went to school full time from the age of 15 until last November. So that's a lot of time um, that I've been consistently chipping away at it and had a lot of jobs that ended up being very frustrating and not a good fit and some that I really, really wanted to work and had terrible management that drove me out. It's just, it's been one of those things where I, I, I feel like life is pushing me towards something. I just have no idea what it is. And I want to feel like it's this podcast and it's connecting with people spiritually. And I hope that is my future, and I hope that's part of what I get to be a part of. But I, again, right now I just feel really, really cut off, disconnected, and like, do I really have the right to be dispensing this stuff when my own personal life feels like a mess? 
when it feels inconsistent and not terribly spiritually, you know, up. And I've had really good stretches where I was able to maintain a very cheery disposition in the face of so much crap, but I just, I go through cycles. I think everything is in cycles. And I guess I just hope I can weather, you know, a few more of these storms before I get to a point where it's not such a a severe swing. You know, I want to be in the middle. I want to be in that Zen place or is it Buddhist or who calls it ataraxia? I don't know where the term ataraxia came from because I'm not a smart man, but the term ataraxia means imperturbability. And I'm very perturbed quite often, so reaching imperturbability seems almost impossible. But that's my goal. I don't want to be bothered by nearly being crushed to death on the road every time I drive my daughter to work. <laughs> um, you know, like I don't want to be burdened by the only jobs around me being warehouse work or fast food or a degree that I don't have. You know, I don't want to be burdened by all these things that feel like they're they're inescapable. You know, they're if if I ignore this, I'm gonna die in a, in a ditch kind of thing. You know, like or my family's gonna leave me. And yeah, the 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 summation of this rant is that being a human being is fucking difficult. And if you are struggling with it too, be real with that. Don't don't try and guard that to to appear a certain way to other people. You're not fooling yourself, and I don't think you're fooling them either. I think we most of us are perceptive enough to know when someone else is being disingenuous. And for me, it's like it feels like a slap in the face when someone's being blatantly disingenuous with me. I just kind of it it's like a visceral reaction. I, I get a little angry. And I don't want to be like that either. I don't want to be mad at people for them being where they're at. But at a certain point, someone needs to kind of shake us all out of our our stupor a little bit and be like, hey, you're not fooling me. Are you fooling yourself? Okay, well then why don't you just start working on truly being honest and seeing where that that leads. And trust me, it can lead a lot of good and bad places. I've been way too honest with people in the past who weren't really interested in, in that honesty being shared. You know, and it's that whole like Bible verse about don't uh, toss your pearls before swine or don't put your pearls, before, whatever it is, um, which is a weird thing. Uh, I mean, was that was that an issue back then where people, um, I know it's a metaphor, but like, was, was that one that really landed with people? Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I was literally handing out pearls to my swine last week. I don't know. Anyway, the concept makes sense. Don't put out precious and heartfelt things to people who aren't in a space to appreciate that. They're not energetically going to be able to receive it. But I do that anyway because I I feel like someone's got to be the disruptor. Someone's got to shake people out of their normative views. And I might be that person sometimes. Other times that that might not be me at all and that might not be my role. But I, I feel like that has been a consistent theme where I've I've alienated a lot of people because I I tend to be very honest, but I've also heard a lot of, you know, growth come out of that. It doesn't really translate perfectly for me, you know, having all these wonderful friendships because some people really don't like that level of honesty. But I can't not be that way. It 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 literally pains me to be anything other than that. So, all right. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I just wanted to put out this little honest blurb and just say, here I am, I'm struggling, I'm trying, I want to keep this thing going, but I need help. I need I need something in my life that makes sense and is clear cut to happen in a way that will help propel me forward. I need, I need to find social groups that I can see face to face. Emails and Zoom calls just are not sufficient for me. I wish they were, and I appreciate them, and I would rather have those than nothing, for sure. But it is so important for me to have like FaceTime with people, and yet it has to be a very specific type of deal. Like I can't just go out and get into a party where I don't know anybody and just like have a great time. I typically wither in the corner because people start asking me about stuff, and I'm too honest. 
or I just I share my heart and some people really like that and some people are just like what the fuck and move away from me and you know whisper to people in the corner about the weird guy it, it that's fine that's who I am that's why I I struggle to put myself out there socially because it has to be like I really have a hard time with people that aren't kind of in the general ballpark as me where they're at least willing to be somewhat transparent and recognize that social norms are built on control and 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 just a weird sense of normalcy that doesn't really exist in human life. You know, this whole thing is bizarre to me. So let's not try and like always act like things are normal and this is the, just the way things are. Like every moment we can shake things up and make them different. And so I I I just I guess I feel that tension there. Like, I'm ready to shake things up and make them totally different, but my life is dictating a totally different path that requires me to be patient and ask for guidance and help to get through those moments where I feel like I'm just on a stuck on repeat, doing the same things over and over and not feeling fulfillment from those things. And yeah, I know I'm supposed to be, you know, carrying water and chopping wood before and after enlightenment or whatever, but... I'm still waiting for like the enlightenment part to be a little more definitive and not just be something that I want to be true. So yeah, I'm I'm still hungry for that really profound no doubter of a spiritual experience. I'm trying to do it without taking psychedelic drugs, but I'm certainly open to that. I don't have access in my state and I don't really try and procure them anymore like I used to, so If you made it this far, I appreciate you listening and hearing me out. And I do plan to continue this podcast. I just, I just want you to know that this is where I'm at. And if it does change, if the podcast ends, at least there will be a pretty good indicator of why that happened out there in the ether. So on that note, going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, concerns, or emails you want to send me, you have the keys, 639 at gmail.com. I've been a little slow at answering the last month or so, just, again, because of the headspace. But I really, really appreciate those emails and honest feedback and information and just sharing your story. It is hard to find you know, people out there that we connect with on a deep level, and so when you do, it's, it's really valuable. So I appreciate that. And you can find me on Instagram at you are the one you seek. And on that note, I am going to go. I hope that you are doing well and that you go in love and light. And as usual, namaste. Namaste.